morning. It's a beautiful day outside today, and we can get just as beautiful right in here in this holy house. Let's rise this morning. Let's open our hearts and minds for worship today. Let's sing Ice Fix. seated. So Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. If you haven't signed up to come or to help, you can still do that. Put it on the connect card. Let us know. We will find something for you to do and to help us out. 
that would be wonderful. Also, you can sign up there to help with Sunday school as well if you want to come and help with that also. Prayer intercessors are supposed to meet down here after this service, so please come down here. And quilters are looking for new quilters all the time. They will be quilting this Saturday at 10 o'clock. So if that's something you're interested in, show up and they will teach you how to do it. You don't need any experience, it says. We have a Guatemala mission we're going to be taking, and there's a list in your bulletin of things that we are looking, medicines to take to the children, and if you can bring some of those in in the next few weeks, that would be wonderful. So please look at that list and see what's on there. So did anyone look in the mirror this week and say, I am a treasure? You know, that's what Pastor Dave taught about last week in the parables and you were assigned to look in the mirror and say I am a treasure you know that treasure that great thing of value that God has taken to be his own paid the price for is you and so that's what you were called to do in, in those parables so today we look at something totally different we look at the feeding of the 5,000. And, you know, it's in all four Gospels. It's a big event, you know, this feeding of 5,000. And you're going to hear more about that. But you're going to hear it from a different perspective. And I want to get you in the right context of this feeding of the 5,000. Because the way it starts off in all four Gospels is the same. And it's very different. And maybe you've never even thought about the opening sentence to that feeding of the 5,000. Because it starts off, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Did you know that's how the reading starts for the feeding of the 5,000? When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew to a solitary place. So, of course, the question is, what happened? You know, the past few weeks we've been talking about parables. And now Jesus heard what has happened and he's withdrawing to a solitary place. So the question is, what happened? Did we miss something? Yes, because we don't always cover every reading in our pericope of our set readings that we had. We missed a couple of things. But before I go there, I want to talk about a sermon that was preached back on June 18th, Father's Day, by Pastor Paul. Does anyone remember? Everyone's laughing. <laughs> well, the fact of the matter is I asked Pastor Paul what he preached about on June 18th and Father's Day. And guess what? He didn't remember either. <laughs> so it's okay. What we... He talked about that day, and maybe this will bring it to mind a little bit. If you remember, the pyramids were all white, which was a little different, because usually in June they're green all the time. And they were white, and it's Father's Day, and so what Pastor Paul talked about was actually the father of John the Baptist, Zacharias. He talked about John the Baptist. You remember there was this old man, Zacharias, and he was a priest, and he went into the temple, and all of a sudden an angel appeared to him. And the angel appeared to him and told him that he was going to have this son. And he was like, wait a second, no way, that can't happen. And so the angel said, well, you're going to have this son. He will be great in the sight of the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit. Many in Israel he will bring back to their Lord and God. He will make ready the people and prepare the way for the Lord. That's what John the Baptist said was going to do and did. That's what the angel prophesied about. John the Baptist was the cousin of Jesus. You know, Jesus' mother Mary was visiting Elizabeth, and the baby inside Elizabeth, John the Baptist, jumped for joy when he heard Mary's voice. And it was John the Baptist, you know, who baptized Jesus and saw the dove and God say, you know, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And it was John the Baptist who Jesus said that among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater 
Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So Jesus said, there's no one greater born among women than John the Baptist. He was the last great prophet. He was the cousin of Jesus. Just to get you in the context of John the Baptist. Speaking of cousins, my father was from the Pittsburgh area and his brothers and sisters, my aunts and uncles, lived up there. They didn't move out of that area. And I was always a little jealous of them, of my cousins, because they all lived up there and every Sunday they would get together and they had close relationships and we only got to go up there once or twice a year. But still they were my cousins and, you know, I was close to them and they am close to them still. And, you know, if there's a wedding or a funeral and we talk or if it's Christmas... And there's this like close relationship with cousins, even though you may not get to see them all the time. They're family. There's a blood relationship. There's something special about those cousins. And we don't know how often Jesus saw John the Baptist, but they were cousins. So back to the gospel. When Jesus heard this, he was so upset that he had to go away. So what did he hear? Well, actually, two things happened. First, right after the last parable that we talked about last week that Pastor Dave preached on, Jesus went to Nazareth. And in Nazareth, guess what? They ran him out of town. They didn't believe they didn't have faith in who he said he was. And in the miracles he was doing, there were, it said in gospel, very little faith. And so that had occurred. But the biggie was that His cousin, John the Baptist, was killed. His head was literally chopped off by King Herod. And so Jesus heard that news, and he got in a boat to go off to a solitary place. And that's the context. That's the beginning of this miracle feeding the 5,000. So I just wanted to put your head there so you'll understand as we talk more about this during today's service. Pastor Dave, you want to start us off here with the... Please rise if you're able. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you know all our hidden thoughts Nothing is hidden from your sight. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. For we lift up our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose love endures forever. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. We admit, O Lord, that we often do not freely extend your grace and share our faith with others. Forgive us, O Lord. Open our eyes to see the opportunities. Tell of our faith. Show compassion to others. Renew our faith and fill us with gratitude. May our words and actions lift up and encourage We have not always considered the needs of others before our own or how you might use us to serve others. Forgive us, soften our hearts, move us by your Holy Spirit to see and meet the needs of the people around us. May those we encounter see the love of Christ in all we say. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Our Heavenly Father calls you his child because of the faith living inside you. Your sins have been forgiven by Christ. They are forgiven. Let us now share God's peace, having confessed our sins.
Ask all the children to come down now, and Pastor Dave will have story time. It's one of my favorite parts of the service. Wow. How's everybody doing today? 
Yeah. So how many are you excited about going back to school or how many of you are not excited? You, you are excited? Okay. You are good. Hi, guys. We got a good fire going today. Always glad to see that. So I'm going to tell a story about two boys, and I want you to help me out. Robert, he was going to kindergarten. Anybody been in kindergarten? Some of you? Okay. So he went to kindergarten, but he was having a bad morning. What would cause Robert to kind of have a bad morning going to school? All right, maybe some kids were mean on the way to school. What else? Yeah. Some older kids were kind of mean to him. Yeah. What else? Oh, Henry's got an idea. <gasps> Henry says maybe he woke up late. Does that ever happen to you guys going out the door late? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, Robert, when snack time came, Robert had a bag of goldfish. But when Robert looked around, he noticed that there was this boy, Kyle, and he didn't have any snack. And he said, Kyle, like, why don't you have a snack? Right. He forgot to bring it. That's right. Sometimes that happens. So, you know what Robert did? What would you do? Yeah. Well, yeah, you could do that. Yeah. He went out to the cafeteria to get something. He could get some of the cafeteria. That's good. Robert, uh, I'm sorry. Well, what do you think Robert did? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. He opened up his bag of goldfish and he gave Kyle some of his. And we call that, it's a big word, it's called compassion. When you have compassion on somebody, you care about that person. And he cared about Kyle so much that he gave him some of his goldfish. And not just one, Pastor Blaze, he gave him a, a lot. And we call that compassion. You're going to hear Pastor Blaze talk more about Jesus having compassion on us. So what do you think? Compassion's a good thing? That we care about others? That we look around and see what needs they may have? Yeah, that's about it. That's all I got. But we do have goldfish for you. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus came here to show compassion for us. That he was willing to give us his all. That's how much he cares for us, and he loves us. So we pray that we take this home with us and remind ourselves how compassionate Jesus was. In his name we pray, amen. Now, Miss Lori's got a special snack so that no one goes with, without a snack. We're not going to forget them. Sound good? Sound good. All right, sound good to me too. All right, guys. We'll keep the fire going. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Fill our hearts with sincere gratitude for your care and provision. Lord, may our deeds be a witness of our faith and a reflection of your grace and mercy. For we ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Old Promise reading is from the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy. Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the riches of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. So actions speak louder than words. You've heard that phrase, right? Probably a lot. Actions speak louder than words. We're going to have this reading from James. You know, all you have to do is look at the news and hear some politicians and you quickly find out actions speak louder than the words. But that's not who James is talking about. James is talking about folks that say they have faith, but don't have any action. You know, there's those examples like a father that smokes that says to his kids, don't smoke, it's not good for you, and yet he smokes. Or maybe it's, you know, love your neighbors, but at the dinner table, a wife is telling her husband about how she doesn't like how this neighbor does this and that and doesn't like this neighbor, and then the kids go out and, you know, are mean to the neighbors. There's so many examples they could go on and on and on. I'm sure you could think of many of them. There's a recent poll that said that people don't trust the church. They don't trust Christians because we are the church. They call us hypocrites because actions speak louder than words. What are the actions? James said, you know, someone has faith in Jesus Christ. Well, that's good. They believe that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. But do we imitate him? Do we show love to others? Or do we do actions that are the opposite sometimes? Sometimes our words don't match our actions. But God has compassion on us. Jesus Christ died on the cross for those sins of when our actions don't match our words. And we try to show our faith in what we do, and that's what we're called to do. We're called to have our actions match our words, the words that we say here and the songs that we sing here. When we go out there, do our actions match our words? Do we have compassion for others the way that God has had compassion for us and given us forgiveness? A little more to dwell on as we continue with our readings. The new, pardon me, the new promise reading is from the book of James, the second chapter. 
What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. This is where the grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give. Oh, the shape that we were in. Just when all hope seemed lost, love Table. Oh, oh, oh. And 
To the thief and to the die To the hero and the coward To the prisoner and the soldier To the young and to the old All who hunger, all who thirst All the last and all the first All the paupers and the princes All who failed, you've been forgiven And all who dream and all who suffer All who love and lost and love All the chained and all the free All who follow, all who lead For anyone who's been let down All the lost you have been found All who've been labeled right or wrong To everyone who hears this song He said come Just sit down and rest a while as you come to the table. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. When Jesus had heard what happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Make my beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When Jesus had heard what happened... He got in a boat and went off to a solitary place. As I said at the beginning, he was upset. He was upset because John had been killed. He was upset because the people weren't believing. And then the next sentence says, When they heard this, the crowd followed him. When they heard this, what did they hear? Did they hear that Jesus had left in a boat? Or had they heard that John had been killed by King Herod? King Herod had this amazing feast. You know, King Herod walked around in big robes and he wanted to be the most important one and have the attention on him. And he was upset that John was accusing him of sinful behavior. King Herod had John's killed to please his guest. There were people that were still following John the Baptist and listening to his teaching about repenting from their sins and that the kingdom of heaven was near. So maybe they were part of those crowds when they heard that John had been killed. 
There were people who had been listening to Jesus talk about the parables, about hearing how they were a treasure, and about seeing all that he could do and the healing miracles. And so there were these crowds, and they wanted to follow Jesus. When you've gotten bad news, maybe a cousin has died, something horrible has happened, what do you want to do? Well, you probably want to be alone. You want to be able to cry, to pray, to ask God why, to be sorrowful. And that's all part of a grieving process that's healthy, that we should do. But sometimes that grief carries on for longer and longer. You've lost someone in your life or lost an important relationship. That grieving can last for weeks. Sometimes it goes on for months and years. And for some people, a lifetime. They get swallowed up in that grief. And they can't seem to get out of it. And what do you do? For the hurt is real, the grief is real, but how do you address that hurt? I've talked to some folks over the years about that when they've wanted to meet and talk about that in some in this congregation. And what I've suggested to them is that they need to find something, some ministry, something to direct to helping others. There's a story about a man who lost his wife after 54 years of marriage, a deep relationship, and he had deep grief, and that grief continued day after day and month after month, and he didn't know what to do. He went to counseling, he read books, but the grief still was bringing him down and swallowing him up, and he was Catholic, and so one day after the Sunday service, he asked the priest if he could meet with him the next day, and the priest said, sure. And so on Monday morning, they met, and the priest talked to him about this grief and said, so what are you going to do when you leave here? And he said, well, I'm going to take a bouquet of flowers to my wife's grave. I've got the bouquet in the car. And the priest said, well, if, if I give you a suggestion of something to do, will you do it? And he said, yes. He said, well, I want you to go over to the nursing home, and instead of taking that bouquet to the, your wife's grave, I want you to take that bouquet into the nursing home and give each patient a flower from that bouquet. Will you do that? And he said, yeah, I'll do that. And he said, well, let's talk next Monday. And so he went, and he did that. The following Monday, he called the priest and he said, we don't need to meet because I'm busy. I've got some people I've got to talk to at the nursing home that are now friends of mine. and They're looking forward to seeing me. So Jesus sees these large crowds when he gets out of the boat. He sees their need and he has compassion on them. In the midst of his grief, he has compassion on these people that need healing. And it says that he heals them all day. He teaches them. In the Gospel of Mark, when it talks about the feeding of the 5,000, it says Jesus calls them sheep without a shepherd. And so he's their shepherd. He's there for them. And he spends the day doing that and the disciples come to him and say, Jesus, you've got to send these people out. They've got to eat. And Jesus says, uh, you feed them. But Jesus, all we have is five loaves and two fishes. How can we possibly feed them? And so he says, bring the loaves to me. And he directs the people to sit down, and we hear in the other Gospels about how they sit down in groups. 5,000 plus women and children, imagine, that's a lot of people. And they're all sitting there. And So Jesus takes those loaves and those fishes, and he prays 
thanks God for them, prays to God for them. And then he gives those loaves to the disciples. You know, it was five loaves and two fishes and there's 12 disciples. Well, it says Jesus broke them and gave them to the disciples. And they gave them out. And everyone got fed. Over 5,000 plus women and children, it says. Now, this is the only miracle that's in all four Gospels. When St. John was writing his Gospel, he had already read Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so he gave other miracles that occurred and other teachings that Jesus gave. But this particular one, he kept and he included. Because think about it. Jesus fed 5,000 plus women and children. 5,000. Did he really do it? Do you believe that Jesus did that? Now let's go all the way back to the Old Testament. You know, there was the Israelites leaving Egypt. And it wasn't just 5,000. It was thousands, hundreds of thousands. And they left. And God gave them manna from heaven, bread from heaven. Not just once, but day after day, year after year. Do you believe it? Did it really happen? Do you have faith in what God can do? Do you have faith that Jesus fed 5,000. That's an amazing, amazing miracle. That feeding of 5,000. Jesus having compassion on them. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God had compassion on us, on all the world. He wanted to show love and mercy because we needed to be healed. There is nothing that we could do to heal ourselves. We're sinful. We're broken. We needed to be healed. And Jesus Christ gave that ultimate action on the cross. But before he did that, he took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He gives it to us. Because when we receive Holy Communion, we receive healing, forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. Do you believe that that is this ongoing feast that's been going on for about 2,000 years that gives you, God, the Holy Spirit, the gift of forgiveness and eternal life? You see, the action of coming up here and getting communion and One of us saying the body of Christ and you saying amen or agreeing or taking, you're showing an action in your faith. And you're receiving that compassion of our God, the God that loves you, that treasures you, so that you can look in the mirror, like Pastor Dave said, and know that you are a treasure and what your value is. You receive that wonderful gift that gives you Life and salvation. You have a God that loves you, that calls you his child, that has given you a heavenly home. And you take that amazing action of receiving his body and blood, knowing that we have a God that loves us. Now may that peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please rise for the prayers of the church. Our response this morning is hear our prayer. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you take our meager resources, bless them, and there is enough. May we trust that what you bless is sufficient. Give us the heart to do your work, Lord, in your mercy. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Inspire us to care for the environment and to reverse the damage we have caused to your creation 
Lord, in your mercy. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. We especially pray for those who are on our hearts this morning. Lord, in your mercy. You freely offer the fullness of salvation. Give us open and welcoming hearts that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring your vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their salvation and joy in you. Lord, in your mercy. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for the boundless mercy and grace you have shown in sending your Son to bear our sins and be our Savior. Gathered in his name, we pray that you would strengthen us to rely not on our own strength, but on your love and forgiveness. Guide us to invite others to know your grace and the peace that surpasses all understanding. To you alone, O Lord, be all honor and glory, for you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. We believe this is Christ's true body and blood, given for the forgiveness of sins. And if you do too, you are welcome to the table.
Let your 
Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you steadfast in the true faith, the life everlasting. Amen. We pray as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Blaze, next steps. You've been shown amazing compassion by our loving God. So as you go out from here, let your actions speak louder than your words and showing compassion to others, showing love to others and letting them see Christ in all that you do so that they too will know of the great love that God has for them and a God that loves them and a heavenly home and everlasting life through your actions. Amen. Thank you. Now receive the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. I never know a love like yours So intimate, so powerful And I taste it, I see Nothing comes close I never know a love like yours Jesus, your name is power It's breath of living water Your spirit guides me To the heart of the Father Let your praise ring louder Every day and every hour Your spirit guides me To the heart of the Father At home like this Just like a child So innocent And I'll say inside your arms Cause you won't let go I never know A love like yours No, Jesus Your name is power It's breath and living water Your spirit guides let your praise be louder Every day and every hour Your spirit guides me To the heart of the Father Sing praise God we sing praise We sing praise We sing
serve the Lord. Jesus, your name is power. It's breath and wind and water. Your spirit guides me to the heart of the Father. Let your praise be louder every day and every hour. Your spirit guides me to the heart of the Father. Jesus, your name is power. It's breath and wind and water. Your spirit guides me. Father, let your praise ring louder every day and every hour. Your spirit guides me to the heart of the Father. Sing praise, God, we sing. 